Well, one of the most common understandings about Christ is that He is the Son of God. Most people will say, yes, I believe He's the Son of God. Uh, but when you look, probe a little closer or a little deeper into that and say, well, well, how is He a Son? Then you start seeing variations. You start seeing answers like, well, He is a Son uh, prophetically. Well, He was not really the Son of God before He came to earth. He's the Son of God because He was born in Bethlehem. Or He's a Son in a metaphorical sense or maybe in a typical or symbolic sense, or that he's a son, just to use a terminology that we're familiar with, to indicate a close relationship with the father, but that it's not really a true literal sonship or a natural sonship. Something happened in the days of eternity uh, uh, that Jesus was brought forth. We see that in Proverbs chapter 8. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8, beginning at verse 22 onward to verse 30. We have Jesus there being spoken about or speaking rather under the title of wisdom. And he says, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting when there were no depth of water. I was brought forth before the hills was I brought forth. If you look up these meanings, brought forth, the Lord possessed me. They mean begotten. They mean born. Uh, Jesus speaking under the title of wisdom and he's saying before all creation took place, before anything happened, I was brought forth by the Father. The Father begat a son. God begat uh, a son. What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. So the one who was with God under the title of wisdom was his son, as we read in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 4. He's the father and the son. The Jews understood that the Messiah who would come to earth to be born would be none other than the Son of God that existed with God from the beginning. This is what's indicated in John 3.16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God gave His begotten Son. He had a begotten Son. Christ did not become God's begotten Son on earth. He already was. And it was that Son who came. Just like Isaiah indicates to us that uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. We were given a son, none other than the Son of God. Uh, in John chapter 17, he explains uh, to his disciples, he's the Son of God because he was brought forth. John 17, 8 says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Now, some people have a little bit of a hang-up with uh, John 3.16, particularly the word begotten that appears there. They say, well, the word begotten does not really mean to be born or to come out of. It actually simply means unique. So, what does the word begotten mean? It's very simple. If you do a Bible study, a word study on the word begotten, you will find that it appears in the New Testament nine times. If you look at each instance, you will find that yeah, it refers to Christ a number of times, but it also refers to human children who were the only born children of their parents. So the word begotten does not simply mean unique. There is a uniqueness to it. The uniqueness is it's an only born child. Christ is God's only born son. That's what begotten means. Uh, we cannot deny the birth aspect and simply say it's unique. Well, what is it that makes Christ unique? You see, next to the word begotten, there's also the word son. What is it that makes Christ the unique son? It's his birth. It's the fact that he came out from God and thereby he inherited all things. We can't deny the birth of these other children that are referred to as only begotten. What we have according to the Bible is Jesus Christ being as perfect, as holy, as divine, as the Father. But he's not the Father, he's the Son. Many people will falsely accuse uh, us of believing that Jesus Christ was created. And this is further from the truth because right there in John 1, 3, it says all things were made by him and that there was not anything uh, that was made that was not made by him. And so if all things were made by him, that kind of excludes himself from being made. And so Jesus Christ was not made, he was begotten. Uh, he was brought forth or born or came out of or came forth from the Father. Very clearly revealed in the scripture and many places in the New Testament Christ confirms that 
as we saw the disciples said that but Christ himself out of his own lips he says that he was the son of God that he came forth from God that he came out from God that is his most essential quality and that's what makes him who he is and qualifies him to be the Savior and the Messiah.